What you need to know about Microsoft Fabric to keep using Power BI. It's the end of May 2023. Last week, Microsoft announced Microsoft Fabric at the Build Conference, and it's big news. If you've been watching social media, if you've been watching the community, uh, the contributions from MVPs, members of the product teams, the blogs from Microsoft, you know that it's all about Fabric. And Fabric is, well, it's a lot. There's a lot there and there's a lot to know. But if you're a citizen developer with Power BI and you're using small to moderate scale sets of data, what do you need to know about these changes in order to continue to use Power BI? And the answer is nothing. Power BI continues to work as it always has. And even though the platform may have been rebranded, you can still use Power BI Desktop to import, cleanse, transform, model, calculate, and, and visualize your data as you always have. You'll be able to deploy it to the service and share with users. All of that still works. No changes are necessary. You don't need to do anything. So what is Fabric? And what should you know about it? Well, now that you know you don't need to stress about it, let's talk about what Fabric is. Briefly, now a lot of people in the community have done a great job of getting down into the weeds. I have colleagues at, at 3Cloud who are recording videos and we're making contributions as well. So I'm not going to get into the weeds with what all these components are. So one of the things that you should know is that the logo is green now. And what that means is that if you're recording videos using green screen chroma key, Guess what? The logo drops out, so know that. Let's turn that back on. So why does Fabric exist? Let's think about conventional Power BI projects. So typically, in a serious Power BI project with business data, the data needs to be cleansed and shaped before it enters Power BI. A lot of that transformation work can be done in Power BI, but in an enterprise solution, typically we'll want to do that in a data warehouse or data mart. And so we rely on data engineering teams to do a lot of the, the transformation and cleansing and then population of a database of some kind. And it could be a data lake or it could be a relational database, but we want to land that data into dimensional form with fact tables tables and dimension tables. Make sure that it's clean and reliable. And oftentimes that data engineering work, which is performed in different tools outside of Power BI, so different teams with different skills, will have to perform that work and it often takes longer than anticipated because it's arduous work and it takes, takes a lot of effort. And so the BI teams are often blocked and dependent upon data engineering to get that work done. Well, enter Microsoft Fabric and the modern era of data analytics. So now the staging, transformation, cleansing, and uh, shaping of this data can all be performed within the same environment. So we now have Fabric Workspaces, which is really just the rebranded name for Power BI Workspaces, which can contain things like uh, lake houses, folders, pipelines, Python notebooks, the Spark engine and Spark clusters, and Delta Lake. All of this is based on enterprise scale, um, open source industry standard components that work at scale with gigabytes, terabytes, or petabytes of data and can be scaled up to perform very, very quickly. And uh, we're having a great experience with a lot of these components. But the important thing is that Power BI just continues to work natively against the rest of Fabric. So that's the takeaway. You don't need to learn anything else, but if you want to expand your skill set and want to embrace the components of Fabric, there are many places to go to learn to do that. Thanks for watching.